of the goodness of God. All my life, all my life, you have been faithful. Yes, all my life, you have been so, so. the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God, yes, all my life, all my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so, so good, yes, with every the goodness of God all my life, all my life you have been faithful, yes Lord, all my life you have been so, so good, every breath, with every breath that I am able, I have seen the good of God, your goodness, come on, your goodness is running after, running after me, your goodness is running after, running after me, with my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything, your goodness is running
again, Destiny Church. It's great to be able to bring you another message on the, uh, one of the parables from Matthew 13. I hope that you've had a great week up until now. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed some of the slightly relaxing of the restrictions from the government. I know that's earlier this week. Um, it was great to get together with some of my cousins, um, my sorry, my, my brother and, and his children, for our children to be able to just be able to go to the park and and um, be in each other's company again. It, it was a great thing. So, um, hope you've had a, had a good week and some of the kids going back to school as well. Uh, I hope last week's message on the parable of the sower um, spoke to you in some way and was able to give you some encouragement, some challenge during this time. And um, my encouragement to you is to, to read through Matthew 13 for yourself during this time as well. And, and I'd be interested to know if, if some of the things that God is showing me as I read it might be similar to what he's putting on your heart or it might be completely different. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm certainly enjoying reading through the parables again and uh, just trying to find something new out of it that I can um, yeah, dwell on and, and put in place in my life at this time. So um, the second one in Matthew 13 is the parable of the weeds uh, and it starts in verse 24 and it's interesting as I was um, I sort of committed to going through these these parables thinking yep I'm sure I'll be able to draw something out of each of them quite easily um, but as I read through them and read through them I was realizing some of them are probably a bit easier to to just find a, a uh, a message out of. Um, upon reading this one for the first time, I kind of went, it's pretty, uh, maybe pretty straightforward on the surface what it's saying. I'm not sure I can probably draw much out of it, but um, the beauty of, of the word is that when you read over it again, sometimes God illuminates different things to you. And, and hopefully I can bring you something today that can um, challenge and encourage you as well. So let's um, read in verse 24, I remember to bring my Bible today, which is good. I can actually read from the word, which is a great thing to do. So the parable of the weeds, verse 24. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in, the, in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. I guess one of the positives out of this parable, um, some of the parables as Jesus um, speaks them out to the crowds listening, um, he sort of leaves it there and then moves on. Some of the other ones, the disciples help us out and they ask him, Jesus, what did you mean by what you were saying in that parable? Um, so this one, if we go, he goes on to tell another parable of the hidden, um, sorry, of the mustard seed and the yeast. And then after that one, in verse 36, he leaves the crowd and went into a house where his disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the fields. Thank you, disciples. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. It's interesting that reference at the end there, he who has ears, let him hear. Um, obviously continues to flow on from what I was talking about last week where he's clearly referring to um, you know, hearing in the spiritual there. Do you really hear the message behind that? So have you ever looked forward to something so much in your life that in the lead up to it, you struggle to focus on anything else? Perhaps not paying much attention to the here and now in the lead up to that thing. 
in this current season, it could be looking forward to life as we knew it um, before COVID-19. I know an example in my life, uh, I was looking forward to my long service leave from work. I was actually meant to start my long service leave at the start of this week we just had, um, but because of COVID-19, um, I've postponed it to a later date so I can go traveling and see my family and things like that over East. But man, I was seriously looking forward to my long service leave. Um, I've been working as a teacher for 13 years, and I know in comparison to some people who have been in industry for a long time, they probably think 13 years is not too long, but it's felt like a decent amount of time, 13 years uh, teaching. And a lot of people will also say, okay, oh, come on, teachers get lots of holidays each year. But, um, but to, to have a whole term of long service leave off and just that, the rest that I was looking forward to there, um, I was really last term just looking forward so much to having that time off this term. Um, I know Amanda was as well. We had a calendar on the fridge and she was crossing off the days until I was on long service leave, probably mostly so I could be at home to help her out with the kids a bit more. Um, I know in the lead up to my long service leave, my mind was already there. I wasn't making the most of my last term at work. When I first read this parable that, um, and then Jesus' explanation, it appears to me on the surface to be pointing to Jesus' second coming. When the wicked will be thrown into hell, the blazing furnace, and the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Sounds pretty good for the righteous. Definitely something to look forward to. So much so that going up against the evil in this world might just be something I can maybe endure as I wait for that glory to come. But a bit like me um, longing for my long service leave, an attitude of just enduring to the end will leave us missing out on the amazing things God wants to do through us now. So I thought to myself, if that's all there is to this parable, great, I've got something amazing to look forward to at the end of this life and at the end of this world, the end of the age there. But I thought, what else can I pull from this parable for the here and now? So I took a second look back through, seeking to find, is there a kingdom of heaven principle that I can draw and apply from this parable? And as I read the parable at the start, not the explanation at the end, but the parable at the start, the story, I started to picture the field in verse 24 as being my heart. The good seed being sown as the revelations I receive from the Holy Spirit, as I read the word, I pray with God, I worship, I have life experiences, and good seed is sown on my heart. The weeds being sown by the enemy, it could be fear, doubt, worry, negative life experiences or situations, challenging situations that I face. So for me, I've got this situation where in my heart, in the field of my heart, there's good seed growing amongst some life-limiting weeds. So there are two things that came to mind as I continued to read after that. So I've got this picture um, as the field being my heart, the good seed versus the weeds. The first thing that stuck out to me as, as I continued to read was that God knows when the time is right to harvest those weeds. In verse 28 and 29, the, serv the servants ask the owner, should we pull up the weeds? To which the owner says, no. At first you might think, why wouldn't you want to rip up those weeds straight away? The owner then goes on to explain that in doing so, you might uproot the wheat at the same time. For me, this spoke of us asking God to remove those negative weeds, challenging situations that we find ourselves in. God, just take away those life-limiting weeds on my heart and then my confusion when they don't disappear overnight. I feel like at times the good wheat growing in my life is only growing as it is because of the challenging weed of a situation that I find myself in. Perhaps God knows that if he was to remove that situation from me when I ask, it might also damage or stunt the growth of or uproot the good wheat that's growing at the same time. Maybe I'm maturing in my understanding of what it is to be truly dependent on God. Maybe that's the good seed growing in, on my heart. But I'm only learning to be truly dependent on him because maybe I've lost my job. I would see that as a negative you know, situation, a weed. 
Maybe I'm maturing in my understanding of what it is to be truly loved by God. Once again, the good seed starting to grow in my heart because I'm still hurting from a broken relationship, causing me to cry out to him and learn more about his love for me. So where then they're saying, God, why won't you give me a job tomorrow? Or take away my hurt now. Please pull up those weeds. However, he knows when the time of the harvest um, is for that wheat. The farmers of you out there will know much more about when it's time to harvest wheat than I do. But for this city slicker, the matter of, uh, it was a matter of Googling it. What I found on one webpage, I found really cool. This webpage highlighted there's three signs that you can tell when wheat is ready to harvest. The first one it said was its colour. As the wheat grows, it turns from a green colour to a light yellow. When the green is gone, that's one sign of the wheat being ready to harvest. You've probably heard the saying being green or wet behind the ears. It speaks of being new at something or inexperienced. You haven't done it before. The wheat of my understanding, of your understanding, is not ready for harvest while we're still green, inexperienced. We're going to need some more time growing up against those weeds. So I like that for starters. We might think we've got it, but God knows you're still green behind the ears in this thing that I'm trying to teach you. I'm going to allow that weed to stay there a bit longer so that you can mature and lose that greenness, become more experienced. The second thing, second way we can tell that wheat is, is getting ready or ready for harvest, they say, is the bite test. If you bite on a wheat kernel and it's still soft and chewy, it's not ready. When it's dried and become a bit harder and crunchy, it's ready to harvest. When your situation is biting you, are you soft and chewy? Or do you need some more time growing up against that weed, that situation, to harden up? So, so as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, this is great. I need to lose my greenness, become more experienced. I need to become more harder, more tough. And thirdly, the one that I really liked, it's called nodding. Seed heads will start to nod or bow on the stem when they're ready to harvest. When I first read that, I thought that was awesome. I'll read it again. Seed heads will start to nod or bow on the stem when they're ready to harvest. Your wheat of understanding, my wheat of understanding about how much God truly loves me, how much I truly need to depend on him, his love for me, it's not ready for harvest until I am brought to a place of bowing before the king, a position of full surrender to him. We may not be able to see it ourselves, but the God of the harvest knows when you are no longer green, when you've become tough, and when you are ready to bow to him. And then the beautiful thing is, in Jesus' explanation of this parable, he says that the weeds will be pulled up and burnt. Interestingly, it doesn't actually say that the wheat will be pulled up. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 says that he has made all things beautiful in its time. I believe that in the right time, God will pull up those weeds in your life, provide that job, take away the hurts, and leave behind a mature wheat ready to shine like the sun in the kingdom of heaven, as verse, verse 43 says. So number one, as I read through this, something for the here and now. Let's not get downhearted. Let's not get disappointed as best we can when we're in that tough situation, we're feeling that hurt, whatever it might be, we're struggling to overcome something. The God of the harvest knows that those weeds may need to be there for a little longer for that wheat to fully mature. Number two, it is not God who plants the weeds in your life. Sometimes we can fall into being angry at God for our current situation or circumstances. However, I believe, as this parable highlights, it's the devil who plants the weeds in our lives. Perhaps God 
has allowed them to hang around though just as I've spoken about perhaps God is using those weeds planted by the devil to bring about good in you we've all heard that saying I love it what the devil intended for evil God will use for good like any loving father I'm sure God when you lose that job when you have that hurt whatever it might be like any loving father he wants to give you that job straight away he wants to take away that hurt straight away he doesn't want to see us hurt however also like any loving father he knows that we must learn through our experiences it's interesting to note also when the devil plants those weeds in verse 25 it says he planted them while everyone was sleeping we need to recognize our enemy is a sneaky enemy and he's looking to plant those leaves those weeds in our lives when we're metaphorically sleeping when I thought about this sleeping I thought you know it's not bad to sleep we need sleep but then I started to sort of think about contrasting rest versus sleep and in this situation I would sort of see what God was speaking to me that rest is more about uh, resting in our identity um, in God as we mature the more I know about depending on him his love for me who I am as a child of God a citizen of the kingdom of heaven the more that becomes who I am and I can rest in God in that to me that's different to sleeping in this context so when we're resting in him when we are so secure in identity in him the devil's going to find it hard to come in and plant those seeds of doubt worry anxiety um, things like that but sleeping on the other hand speaks to me of completely switching off if we switch off from God the devil will be able to sneakily plant those weeds without us even knowing it so we need to be in this time and always seeking uh, vigilantly seeking first his kingdom in our lives not allowing the devil a way in so two things there about those weeds coming into our lives first of all is it isn't God who plants them there it says the devil plants the seeds while we're sleeping May we be vigilant, not allowing to plant them, and trust in God that He may be allowing them to stay longer than we think they maybe should be there as the God of the harvest. He knows. So, as I read this parable of the weeds, as a believer, I look forward to the time of harvest that Jesus explains when God will make all things new and the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. What a hope we have to look forward to. As I read through the second time, I'm also challenged for the here and now to trust in God through my circumstances. Not merely enduring, but maturing as the wheat amongst the weeds that may come my way. And I'm reminded that God is good. He's not the author of my hurt in my life. But he will, in the right time, harvest those weeds. I trust in him. I must be vigilant in seeking God to not allow the devil a space to sneak in and plant more weeds. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word and what it can teach us, Father. What it can teach us about the hope we have in the future what we can look forward to in eternity with you father but also what it can teach us about how we can live the here and now lord so we can make the most of our time here as we look forward to that future and i pray lord god as you've shown me today that god you would give us that grace to trust in you through all situations in our lives Whatever we're going through at the moment, Lord, may we trust in you that you are the God of the harvest. Father, you know what's going on in our hearts. You know when the time is to take those hurts, those situations away from us. Thank you, God, that you use those situations to mature us like the wheat, to give us experience, to harden us up. Father, to bring us to a place where we are bowing before you, 
where we've surrendered that aspect of our life to you. Give us, God, the spiritual sight to see that in our lives so that we may not become disheartened, disappointed, or wanting to give up, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that in all this, we rely on you, the source, the provider of our strength, our peace, our wisdom, our guidance, Lord God. So again, Father, we thank you, we love you, and we pray as this week, coming week, um, is upon us, Lord, that we put some of these principles into place. And we would grow closer to you. And in doing so, be able to be a, a better light for you, Father, um, in our spheres of influence. And we surrender these things in Jesus' name. Amen.